and welcome back to a new weekly reading vlog. It is currently Tuesday, so I am a day behind, but it's fine. I finished on Monday yesterday anyway. So this morning I read quite a bit actually. I read The Trojan Woman in this book or this collection of three plays by Euripides. It has Hecuba, The Trojan Woman and Andromache. I read Hecuba last December, so that is, I believe it's in my 24 hour readathon vlog a couple of videos back if you want to have a look at that and I really did enjoy that book so I would recommend that and I actually did quite like The Trojan Woman too. I think Euripides is definitely the most enjoyable Greek tragic play that I've read. There's only three whose work is surviving. You've got Esocles, I think is how you say it, Sophocles and Euripides. All Greek plays were written in trilogies if you didn't know but we only have one that survived in its completion and that is by Asocles. I don't know if that's said right, but I found him a bit of a drag. Um, wasn't a big fan. He likes big, long passages, which this does too, but it's just a little bit more interesting, a little bit more dynamic, and the topics, I think, are just a little bit more engaging. Euripides does seem to be more interested in telling the kind of female perspective of war, um, which I think is quite radical for the time, perhaps. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't really researched into it, but it's not what you expect. Um, when going in it because you kind of I don't know I suppose we're always told that Greeks are very condemning to women and it obviously is like this is written at a time where women were not seen as equal to men mm -hmm. but there is definitely it's not as straightforward as that I don't think you could disagree with me that's totally fine <laughs> but it's definitely interesting to look at and I think I'm going to look at Hecuba for my mm -hmm. essay and perhaps the Trojan Woman as well because I think there are bits and pieces from that that I can look at so if you're looking to read a Greek tragedy, I would actually recommend this collection um, as a good starting point from what I've read so far. So yes, I enjoyed that. And then if you watched last week's video, I spent most of the week complaining about the fact that I didn't have the bone season to continue like the rest of the series. And then by the end of it, I gave up and I bought the rest of the series. So I'm waiting for that to arrive. That will arrive tomorrow. And last week basically was an entire week of just me tantruming by the fact that I couldn't read the book that I wanted to read. So I didn't read basically anything. So maybe don't go watch the video. But in the end, I did end up picking up a short story called Edge Dancer, which is in between the second and third book in the Stormlight Archive. I thought I'll just it's 100 pages I'll just read that and hopefully it'll get me back in the spirit of reading it did I am now firmly back on the Brandon Sanderson bandwagon and I ended up picking up yesterday the part one of Oathbringer which is the third book in the Stormlight Archive and I'm already nearly 200 pages in started yesterday so I'm loving it this is a great book I enjoyed the first two books I liked them. I thought the ending of the first book in particular was outstanding and I literally could not put it down. I remember reading it just before I had to go to work and I ended up like getting the audiobook and reading the audiobook whilst I got ready and walked to work because I didn't want to stop reading it. Um, I couldn't wait the like six hours of my shift to come back and read it. So ending with the first book was amazing. Sec Sorry, my battery ran out so I'm now in very dodgy lighting backlit and yes sorry about that but this we're just gonna have to do this because it has to charge whilst I film um I should be more organized when I do these videos sorry about that I will work on improvement but this is I don't know what I'm saying but this is the third book in the series and whilst I enjoyed the first two this book I don't know what it is maybe it's my mood maybe it's just being back in the world after taking a bit of a break from it but Sanderson's writing it's just so good. Like, I'm so enjoying this so much more than I was the first two books. This is... I've laughed so many times. I've shed a, a, a slight tear, just very small. But, I mean, I'm only, like... That was, like, I don't know, very early on in the book. I did not expect it. Just a little water, like, not not loads. But it is, it is really funny. I'm enjoying the characters a lot more. Like, I don't think there's a single perspective at the moment that I dislike particularly, um, which is quite rare. And... Definitely not what I felt in the first two books. The first book I really didn't like Shalan, but then I really liked her in the second book and I wasn't too keen on something I don't actually know. I quite liked all of them by the second book actually, but I'm enjoying them all, so it's a bonus. And I just don't want to put it down. I'm really enjoying it. And now I'm 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 annoyed at myself for being in a tantrum for last the last week because I could have been reading this amazing book <laughs> and having the time of my life. Said I, I wallowed in self pity. Why are you now really bright? 
we don't need to see my face in that much brightness so yeah that is my thing for this this week this is obviously a massive book i'm not sure if i'll get any more reading apart from this book this week even though i would love to obviously start the bone season stuff which is arriving hopefully tomorrow i bought some other books as well so i shall show you them when they arrive oh this in itself is 635 pages and it's only part one so we do have part two to go and part two i'm assuming is going to be around about the same so that's interesting i think also I really enjoyed the Edge Dancer, if you saw last week's vlog. So I really want to see more of her character. I don't know if we're going to get it in this book though, so I'm not sure about that. But it is kind of pushing me on to read with a little bit more urgency than I probably, maybe, maybe wouldn't have. But I am still enjoying it, like that's not the sole reason that I'm speeding through this, as they say. But yes, that's exciting and I'm loving it, which I didn't expect to. I thought I'd just enjoy it a little bit as I have the other two books, but this is actually... I don't know, there's just something in this. We're just vibing together this week. Me and Sanderson, this is just a good book and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So I'm going to stop and stop rambling. And yes, welcome to the vlog. We'll see how this week goes. I'm going to stop now. See you later. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the reading vlog. It is currently Friday, so basically I have not vlogged this week, but I have read this week, which is different from last week's, and I do have a little mini book haul to show you because my book has arrived. But let's start with the <coughs> reading that I've done. So I have managed to stick to my goal of reading 100 pages a day, and I'm currently on page 408 of Oathbringer, and I am still really enjoying it. I think it is the best in the series that I've read so far. I'm enjoying all the character lines. There was a big shock at the end of part one. Not really sure how that's happened. We need to dig a little bit further. We need to read a little bit more. But they did explain it, but I feel like it was kind of like a bit of a cop-out explain, but I'm, I don't know, I don't know. And I am intrigued. I'm intrigued. So I don't know how to explain it because obviously I can't, this is the third book in the series. If you don't know, I don't know. I never explain the books that I read anymore. I just kind of, say whether or not I like them or not, but how would you know if you don't know what they're about? This, the Stormlight Archive, ugh, the Stormlight Archive follows quite a few points of view, and it follows mainly a group of people who are currently at war against these creatures called the Parshendi, which are these, I imagine them to be kind of like extraterrestrial alien looking creatures that have like black and red marbled skin, and like their armour is part of their skin. And they're currently at war with these people because they assassinated their king, which obviously is a bit of a no-go and does tend to start wars and stuff like that. And obviously there's a lot more going on there. You follow a person who kind of the lowest of the low at their, in their life and they're currently running bridges for the war. Um, so they're basically like slaves. And then you also follow the brother of the king that was assassinated and he's going through a lot of trouble at the moment because people think he's turning mad because he's getting these visions and that's kind of against their religion um so people aren't trusting him anymore then you also follow this girl called shalan who is not from that country she's from a different country and she's traveled to become a scholar but there's also stuff going on there that's not as straightforward as it seems and then obviously that develops a lot and there is a lot going on in this series and there is a lot of world building and there is a lot going on in this world. It is very thought out, very rich and deep and a, just an incredible imagination Brandon Sanderson has. I don't know how he does it. I really don't. In the first book, I didn't like Shalan. I thought she was really annoying and I liked Kaladin, the kind of slave bridge boy. I liked Dalinar, I thought he was a bit boring, a bit of a a bit boring but the first book kind of mainly focused on Kaladin I would say and you definitely learn more about his backstory then the second book kind of moves on to Shalan's backstory and then this third book we're getting Dalinar's backstory and he is definitely like piquing my interest a lot more because I want to see how he went from the person he is in his past to the person he is now because they are completely different people but yes so very intrigued thoroughly enjoying it this is a massive book, so it is this, let me get the other books. So this is obviously part one of the book, and then you have part two. Part one is like 600 and, 
30 or so pages, 35 pages. The cat's going crazy. <laughs> And then the second part is 745 pages, so it is 700 plus 6, 130, 100 and nearly 1,400 pages, so he's chunky. That is actually way bigger than I thought it was. I'm going to have to speed up the reading, I think, otherwise I'm literally going to be reading this book forever. So, we're going to up the ante and try and read like 125 pages a day. A little, a little up. Uh, you know, it'll speed up the reading. So, yes. So I'm probably going to be reading this the rest of the week. Um, if you don't like fancy, then I'm sorry. You probably will not like this vlog. But stick around for the book haul, even though it's all fancy. But this is a really cool cover. Let me show you how all these books come together. Isn't that cool? I think it's well cool. I was very impressed when that came up. When that um, came to my door, because I ordered it online. So, yes, I don't know what I'm talking about. So I ordered some books online that I told you about, and they arrived, and they are literally beautiful. So let me just show you how beautiful this stack of books is. Like, it literally, I don't know what it is. The colours just all go so well together that it is just, it's a sight to see. I don't know, doesn't that look like a good pile of books? <laughs> I think it does anyway. So the books that I got were the next books in the series of the fifth season. In my last video I kept saying ninth season. I don't know why. I don't think there's even a book called the ninth season. Um, I just kept saying it. Don't know why. But it is the fifth season. And we have the Stone Sky, which is book three. <laughs> and the Obelisk Gate. Obelisk Gate even, maybe. Um, which is book two. So I'm very excited about this. This I think is going to be an incredible series. The first book was really good. The writing style, the atmosphere. <laughs> Sorry about that. The cat knocked over all our recycling. <laughs> so the atmosphere was really incredible. Like the way it was managed to be created to her writing style and the topics that it dealt with. It is quite a heavy read. You follow three storylines and each girl or woman is going through a very difficult point in her life or a big change. So this is a world where it is completely destroyed quite periodically every few hundreds of years by these massive earthquakes and the entire civilization um, only survives through being prepared for them and those that aren't prepared basically they die um, and a lot of them do die like it's not like they survive very often. We are following three storylines. The first is a little girl who has discovered that she is, she's one of the people that have magical abilities in these worlds and she can like sense these earthquakes. She can also cause them and is very involved with the earth. Their magic is kind of entwined with the earth. And then she is taken to this kind of camp where they train, they get trained. Um, but it's not as, it's quite sinister. Um, if they don't go to these camps then they do tend to get hunted by the other people um, because they seem as bad and like kind of immoral and dangerous so if they're not taken to these camps then they are going to be like murdered or they have to live in secret and this camp isn't the nicest place either um it's very strict quite cruel you do follow a second girl who has kind of grown up in this it's not a community like this building um, where they train them and she has to go on this adventure, or not adventure, she has to go somewhere and help people, what's it called, mission, I suppose, but that sounds like a spy thing, but it's not. She discovers a lot of kind of dodgy things about the the, the, the organisation, and then you follow a third storyline where the woman, her son, has just been murdered by her husband, and she's trying to find him and avenge that, so very heavy stuff, and... I cried, I did cry. It was an emotional journey and would highly recommend it. So yes, I'm excited to read the rest of the series and I think I'm gonna do that next next month and just marathon it, so exciting. Then I bought actually a standalone, or not standalone, is it a standalone? I think it's a debut novel and it's definitely the first in the series, but it is Legendborn by Tracy Dion and this has been everywhere, everywhere on Instagram especially, so I'm very excited. Everyone raves about it. It looks freaking cool. 
and I read the synopsis in my five star predictions book and I was I was surprised it, it did not go the direction I thought it was going to go and it was just a synopsis so the book's going to be incredible I can tell. <laughs> And then I got the rest of the books in the bonus season because we all know I had a tantrum because I didn't do that last week. But, so we have the Mime Order, which is the second book, then the Song Rising, which is the third book. I'm a bit, a bit, hmm, because it always worries me when the books in the series don't get bigger. If they stay the same, fine. If they get smaller, you know, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. And this one gets smaller. Like, this is smaller. I don't like, you know. The bone season is 450. Then the next book is 510 or so pages. So a little increase, you know, what we expect. And then this book is 348. So we've got a big decrease. That does worry me a little bit. But, you know. We got, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm just being dramatic, basically. But then we got the fourth book as well, which is The Mask Falling, and it is beautiful. Like, it is lovely. Look at that. Oh, oh. I really like this book, actually. And obviously, you've probably seen this everywhere. And yeah, actually, I managed to get a signed edition um, from Foils. So that was really nice, and I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So I can also now marathon these and have a jolly old good time, <laughs> which I will do. Um, but I think I am gonna finish Oathbringer first. So that is my goal, is to finish this first before I start on any of those new books. Um, and then I've only got one book left of the Stormlight Archive that's being released and there probably won't be another one released for a while, while yet. So I can take my time with reading that one. We'll see how addicted I am after I finish Oathbringer. But I do normally have to take a break because Stormlight Archive is quite heavy. So, we'll see, I'm rambling now. I will catch up with you later. Good day to you all. It is currently Monday, so I'm a day late wrapping up this vlog, as per usual. I don't know, I feel like I haven't vlogged much this week, but it's because I've been reading the same book, so it kind of feels like I'm just updating you on the same things every time. But I do have some new thoughts. I am not loving Shalana as much as I was. I'm currently on page... Leo, they killed me with the door, man. I'm currently on page 162 of part two of Oathbringer. I'm still really enjoying it. I still think it's my favourite in the series. I just am not. This you're too low now. I'm just not loving Shalan as much. I think she's going through some problems that I hope she overcomes, but I don't know if necessarily. She just seems a bit confused, a bit. I don't know. There's something going on there. That I don't think it's good. She got a bit whiny in the middle. She kind of lost her oomph. I'm hoping that that seems to be coming back a little bit now. She still doesn't seem quite right. And I wonder if she'll overcome that or not. Um, I feel like she will because obviously these are... I don't know. This is like a 10 book series or something ridiculous. So there's a lot of progression to go through. <laughs> we, we saw Lyft who is the main character in the novella Edge Dancer, which you have to read between um, Words of Radiance and Oathbringer, so the second and third book. And I really liked her. I know some people find her annoying. I really like her. And we saw her a little bit and it just like, I hope we see more of her soon. And she doesn't lose her like kind of personality traits. Um, Cause I just enjoy reading her. I think she makes me smile. I have laughed a lot in this book. Like the, there are these things called um, spren in this book that are kind of like physical manifestations of things and emotions and the untangible, if that makes sense. So like if you have emotions, so like you're happy, you're sad, if you feel hungry, those kind of things that you can't physically see but can be expressed, they have like a spren to them. That's like this kind of little fairy thing um, that doesn't have a, a brain really, but it just manifest to kind of represent that and they all look differently like I think yeah so the spren are going a bit funny in where they are at the moment but they look like that so they're like these are like green and orange and they're like little petals or like things like that they just kind of represent the emotion that that person's feeling or it doesn't even have to be a person like if it's fire there's fire spren there's water spren and they like they kind of wind spren and they just kind of are a physical embodiment of that thing that isn't physical. Did that make sense? Probably not. 
some of those brands have like the way the magic system kind of works in this well there's there's many different systems but they kind of are based upon the spren and the people can become these things called the knight's radiance where they have superpowers basically um by bonding to a spren and the spren becomes more of like a emotional cap like they have emotional capabilities they can think and they can talk and they can actually they become more human not physically they still are spren but mind they begin to develop like a mind and where was i going with that yes two of the spren that um bond to two of the characters are called sil and Patton, and they're one of the funniest characters in there like the spren are the funniest characters in the book i think and i love reading about them and some of the things that they come up with because obviously they're still learning a lot of things um and Patton, he says some hilarious lines that i think i think are funny i, I told them to someone and they they, they didn't think they were that funny but I did. Maybe you had to be there. Is that like you had to read it to find it funny? But I did. <laughs> but yes, I am thoroughly enjoying this, and I don't think I, depending on the ending, but I don't think I'll continue straight on to the next book. Um, I think I'll give it a little bit of a break and maybe read some of the Bone season and the fifth season next week. Um, last week of February, so we've got to smash out some good books. And yes, I'm kind of, I, There's just so many good book series that I want to read at the moment. So, yes, it's definitely refueled my love for Brian Sanderson, this book, though. I would highly recommend. I just, every time I read it or I read something, and about five times a day, I tell someone that they have to read this book because they just have to read this book. It's so good. And you should all read this book because it's incredible, especially Oathbringer. So, yes, I am going to sign off, and I hope you enjoyed this reading vlog. I hope it wasn't too boring. And if you did like it, please give it a like. If you would like to see more and see what I read next week, and my I think my TBR will be the next video coming up for March, which is very exciting. I have a few readathons I'm taking part in, which I'm super excited for. And I mean, I do have essays to write, but term finishes in March, so hopefully we'll get a lot of reading done. And I will see you in the next video. Have a good day.